You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Today on that Atari show, my top 30 Atari VCS games you should own today. Welcome back guys, BCB here. So this episode, as I said, I'm gonna be talking about my top 30 Atari VCS games that you should own today. Now, I couldn't put everything on my list, obviously. I tried to put a little bit of something for everyone, uh, from every genre, so I did have to leave a lot out, but I, I put my top 30 that I play all the time. Um, there are other games um, as well, and I know, like I said, I couldn't put everything. If you don't see your game here, it might just mean I didn't have enough space, or you have different tastes, or I don't have it, so. I've got a lot of the games, not all of them. Um, and there's one pick I actually don't have yet that I put on my list because I keep hearing how great it is. So, um, but anyway, uh, stay tuned uh, for that Atari show, my top 30 Atari VCS games. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know below down uh, there what you think. I'd love to hear it. And also, go play some freaking Atari. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome to my top 30 Atari VCS games you should own today. This is Ballistic Coffee Boy here. Uh, so I'm going to be going through uh, these games on my own Atari VCS and playing them for myself. So I'm just going to be showing you little snippets, of course, for time's sake. But I'm going to go over 30 games that I think everyone should own. Now, I was originally going to do 20, and then I added on some more. So I'm going to stop at 30. I couldn't get all the games in that I love, uh, but I got a good sampling, uh, a good variety for sure. Let me know down below what you think about this list. Um, and for new VCS users, you're going to love this. Um, these are games that fans um, often talk about and play so and love. So let's take a look here. These are in no particular order, by the way. So the first game I'm going to play... I'm going to see if you can guess, is Donut Dodo. Uh, Donut Dodo is a fantastic game, uh, a great tribute to 8-bit gaming for sure. It's like it just came right off of, you know, the 7800 or the NES or whatever, you know, it's just great. Um, actually, this is probably more of a Jaguar game if I'm, if, if I'm not um, kidding myself, but um, great graphics. Um, I, that's why I say that, because it's such a fun game. Great graphics, great storyline, it's charming. It really does play just like something out of 1983 or 4. You know, it's just fantastic. This is on several consoles as well. Of course, this was on the VCS um, in the beginning. And uh, it's just great. Um, watch out for that toilet seat or whatever that is. Um, it's a great game. And I really love uh, all the love that went into this. Um, it's just fantastic. Worth every penny. I often find myself playing this in several places. I've got it on my iArcade, I've got it on my iPad, um, here on the VCS of course it just shines. 
Um, so if you're new to the BCS, this is definitely one to check out. I definitely would buy it again if you have it somewhere else because it's so fun. I just, I don't like having games like this in one place. Plus you're supporting a great dev, um, as you are with all these games we're going to talk about. So let me know down below what you think about Donut Dodo. I think it's fantastic. So the second game I'm going to be talking about is Avian Knights. Now this game uh, came out not too long ago. I in interviewed uh, Alan One Inc. on that Atari show recently. You may have seen that a couple of weeks ago. Great interview. Had a great time with these guys. It's obvious they have a passion for Atari and love Atari. And um, they actually have a full... Um, on arcade, um, you know, uh, and it's going to be renovated to a Flynn's arcade, which is neat. And I've been invited to go to the ribbon cutting ceremony. I, I hope they're serious because I would love to. This game is a little inspired by Joust, but it features so much more. We have online leaderboards, we have daily contests, which is unheard of, right? We have uh, themes, like I think recently they, they had a. National Pet Week or whatnot, um, so they really do try to do something every day and every week, and it makes this much more fun and current. Not only that, but if you look in the leaderboards, you'll see a lot of um, Atari VCS fans in there. Um, Mock Duck might be in there. Um, you know, I've got a lot of other friends in there from YouTube and from Twitter and from uh, Discord. But great game. Um, it's just fantastic. Um, there are also several different variations you can play in modes. There's like like a tournament mode, there's like a local mode, and um, it, it's just a lot of fun. I definitely check out Avian Knights. Uh, it's, it, it's just a great game on the Atari VCS. It really brings a lot of value to the system, I feel. Um, it's charming, it's got great characters, it's well made. The graphics are great, the controls work really well. And it's one of my new favorites for sure. Um, definitely top contender for my VCS game of the year that's come out this year. Um, it's just great. So, um, as you can see here, we've got all kinds of stuff going on. You have QR codes you can scan. You can also download their eSports app, Major League eSports, and have greater access. So, fantastic. So the next game is Retro Game Quest. The immortal John Hancock recently published these games on the Atari VCS. There were two of them. We might be going over the other one too in a minute. But these are two great examples of, of indie games that just work really well in the VCS. This is obviously made for the 2600, as some others were we'll talk about. And I love featuring these because, as I said, this shows that you could put pretty much any homebrew on the VCS. So, so any homebrew devs out there who have made 2600, 5200, or 7800 games, definitely they should reach out to Atari and see if Atari's interested. Because right now they're kind of looking at these types of games. And I think it's a great tribute to the 2600, for sure. So the next game I'm going to talk about is from a good friend of mine, Khan, with Metgan Games. He was on that Atari show recently. We did two interviews together, two double interviews, I believe. And this this game is great. Um, now, I did help him a little bit with this game as far as some of the story and editing. Um, and he's ha had a few other people help him too here and there, which is great. I love when devs reach out for help in the community. Um, my good friend Bacon Ice Cream Productions helped, and Mock Duck and some other people Um from Discord, so beta testers and whatnot. So just great game. You're basically driving around uh, as you pick up customers. Um, it's kind of like a taxi sim game. As you pick up customers and drop them off um, um, in a safe manner, uh, fast but on time, uh, you will um, start coloring the city in, and it's pretty cool. Now, the original idea for this game was to have a paint dropper, and he changed that, of course. I think it was a great change. I think that would have added too much to the game, too much complexity. Uh, it's just really fun. From my understanding, there are some updates coming for this game, too, which might enhance um, its uh, gameplay for sure. It's a great one. And it's also, um, you know, uh, just a... It, it's really original, I should say, for the VCS, because there's nothing like this on it, for sure. The next game I want to talk about is Gun Tech 2 from Utopos Games. I had uh, Yanni Pentanen recently on that Atari show a few months back. Um, great dev. Um, he actually went through COVID while making this game, and right before it was released, I think. 
and had some things happen in his life that, that were just kind of crazy. And so um, I'm really glad that he's doing better. And uh, this is a great game. Now, this, of course, is a sequel of sorts to the original Utopos, which came out on the Atari ST back in the day, the Atari ST computer. And it's also available on the Atari VCS. I really love the graphics here. The sound sounds like something out of an 80s um, hair metal band or whatever it's just great um i really enjoy it now i'm just showing you a small clip here there's much much more to the game of course this is just one little mission um there are several missions and uh there are uh several uh bosses to fight and it's just a really deep game i haven't finished this game just because i don't have any time but hopefully i will in the future it's really great and it really shows the great uh, programming power on the vcs so the next game I want to talk about is probably going to have to be, hmm, let's see here. Hmm, Heroes of Loot. Orange Pixel puts out some fantastic games. Um, they have games on Steam, mostly. Uh, they also have games just about on every platform, I believe. And uh, here in the VCS, they've had about maybe seven or eight or more games out. It's been great. Everything from Meganoid to... You know, just everything that's come out. And they're, and they're still working on more, too. The dev's name is Pascal. Um, he has a YouTube channel, too. Go check it out. I'll put it below. Um, these games are fantastic. I really fell in love with Heroes of Loot. It kind of, kind of reminds me of a little bit of Gauntlet from, you know, the arcade days. And, um, and just a little bit of a orange pixely type of game it's really fun um i really i really enjoy it um it makes me want to keep playing and collecting things and seeing how far i can go just in this kind of gameplay here um i actually got further than i had been so um really really fun game i highly recommend orange pixel games to anyone that like games you could pick up and play that um, that run well in the system um not very graphics intensive but but graphically also nice i really like them so definitely um, check out Orange Pixels games, all of them. I just picked this one, but there are several out there that I enjoy that I've talked about on my channel before. So definitely check them out. Let me know down below what you think as well about these types of games. So the next game I'm going to talk about is Jetboard Joust. Now Jetboard Joust is a game I didn't get until later for the system. Um, it's been out for a while though on the VCS, but it is great. Now, from my understanding, uh, this game was was actually fashioned after um, a game before. Um, I can't the name of it escapes me right now, um, but it definitely has a has a rich legacy. Now, this game is beautiful. It's graphically fun. It's got a great little soundtrack. It's it's really fun pick up and play game I found for the VCS. Um, very retro inspired and it's got its own character as well um, It's just a lot of fun. Um, I think I show you a little more of the gameplay here just because I had a really good time But Jetboard Joust is just one of those games that I feel like every VCS um, owner needs to buy um, and as I said uh, 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 This was made after um, Let's see it was I want to try to find some information here about it if I have time. I probably don't. Um, but it's <laughs> it's a really fun game. Uh, please check it out. Let me know down below what you think about it. Ha. Huh. Just stuff everywhere. I love it. I love when games are this crazy. It's so fun. So the next game I am going to talk about... It's probably gonna have to be hmm it's probably gonna have to be Sydney Hunter Sydney Hunter um, has about a handful of games now um, in its lineup this is the only game on the Atari BCS for Sydney Hunter but from my understanding um, Evercade's putting out a Sydney Hunter cart later this year that's going to have um, several Sydney Hunter games on it and I can't wait for that uh, now this this of course is just a small sampling like I said before of gameplay of course, um, there's much more to this game, many more levels. Um, I had so much fun playing this game, and still do. Whenever I was recording the uh, gameplay for this, um, I was just kind of blown away again. So much fun. There, there is so much character to this game, so much love went into it. And I really, really like it. This is a collector vision game. 
And there are also some Fletcher Vision games on my uh, I Arcade as well, and probably some other places. But I really enjoy it. Um, it's really fun, for sure. Um, let me know down below what you think about Sydney Hunter. I think it's kind of a no-brainer for the VCS. I think every VCS owner needs to definitely um, have this game. It's a lot of fun. Let me know what you think down below. So the next game we're going to check out, probably going to be, hmm, probably Caverns of Mars Recharged. Now, Atari um, has recharged quite a few games now, um, and while I do... I, I do talk about a few of them in this series. Uh, this is one of those games that I just really enjoyed. Now, it is very much like the original game, which was uh, put out on the APX, the Atari Program Exchange, back in the day. Um, and here we are with the recharge version. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I also find the leaderboards to be very competitive for this. Lots of hardcore players, just like Yars um, Recharged, and I love it. Um, there are several levels to go through, lots of power-ups, and it's a lot of fun, you know. Uh, can get a little aggravating sometimes, especially whenever those little missiles just come flying out um, out from the side from nowhere. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. It's, it's a good showcase game for the BCS. So the next game, again, these are in no particular order. The next game would have to be Atari Mania. Atari Mania is a game that was put out um, to celebrate Atari's 50th anniversary uh, late last year, and uh, it's really fun. Now, I've only gotten to like 40% progress in this game, because right when I got to that point, I got really busy with school and work, but I really enjoy this game. It really does mesh um, old Atari games up, kind of like um, the WarioWare uh, games um, that Nintendo had out. Just a nice mashup of Atari games. Uh, these include everything from like Human Cannonball, um, these include everything from Combat to uh, Circus Atari, all kinds of stuff. And the cool thing is you also collect the covers for these actual box games. You're basically a curator in an Atari museum and, uh, and you know, your goal is to rid that museum of evil. And uh, Bentley Bear plays a little part as you'll see. But um, it's a really fun game. I really enjoy it. These parts here with the staircase and the ghost are amongst some of the hardest to me. Just because, you know, you're kind of playing in the dark, right? You know, you kind of don't know what you're going to get. But the good thing about this game is you can keep playing it over and over again, and you can learn, right, what you're doing. Sometimes you're actually the enemy, quote-unquote the enemy. Sometimes you're the quote-unquote good guy. Um, you really have to kind of just play through it and remember what it looks like. Because, for instance, someone coming up, I think you're actually the the uh, yar on the right side you're not the you know the guy shooting uh but yeah just a really fun game i find it's it's you know got so much variety that it's often fun to put it in and see how far you can get of course as i said i haven't gone very much further than where i was but it's a really cool game i really enjoy it lots of levels um lots of levels to this museum for sure lots of character to this game too um i really enjoy it um, it's so well made, and you can tell that a lot of love went into this and a lot of love for Atari. Um, I also know this is that there was a physical card out, I believe, for the Switch. I could be wrong through Limited Run. Um, some some games uh, have that um, awesome feature where they're put out as carts. But um, yeah, this is a fun one for sure. Let me know down below what you think about Atari Mania. I know that some people don't like this game. I don't know why. I think it's a great mishmash of Atari classics um, and of course you know you have the Apex graphics that are inspired by that period too but just a lot of fun I, I think every Atari VCS fan needs to own this game um, if not just to support the dub but to support Atari and you enjoy the nice history that Atari has to offer here a lot of fun really enjoy it this is probably one of my favorite ones shoot the cowboy <laughs> basically it's you he's like mimicking your every move so it's pretty hard, but it can be done, as you can see. Um, so if you run out of time, you lose a little chance there. Such a fun game. So the next game I want to talk about is none other than Atari's Combinera. 
Now, from my understanding, this is Atari's first IP they re they've uh, had out in a long time, maybe even 20 plus years. Um, this game is out on multiple systems as well. I know it's out on Switch and other places. I really love this game. I'm a big Puzzler fan. Now, I do need to en enhance my uh, get gameplay for this game. Um, I, just, I haven't had a lot of time to play it, but it is a lot of fun, you guys. I really enjoy it. If you like Puzzlers, you'll definitely love this one. And it has a lot of characters, as you can see. Um, it is uh, so much fun. Now, I also know that Atari recently bought Night Dive Studios, and a lot of I they've been gobbling up IPs over the past year um, since this game came out. And I think that's great news because that means we could have stuff like um, Wave is talking about recently having out a Bubsy collection since they own some of the Bubsy games now. He talked about maybe mishmashing Berserk and Frenzy or something, or having Frenzy recharged. So um, I'm excited to see what comes of that. And this is definitely a great example of an Atari title that just shines. Um, there definitely is a learning curve at some point, and you'll see me hit it. After the fourth or fifth level, it does get kind of rough. Um, you just got to keep trying at it, and there's always a way to win. So um, really, you just need to bounce around everywhere. Um, as you can see here, you can roll across areas that have the same color as your ball. If it's white, a white ball can roll across it, but a pink one can't, etc. So um, it's one of those games that makes you think for sure. Um, as a puzzle fan, I find that it really does challenge me every time I play. That's why I wanted to choose this as one of my 30 games. Also, it's Atari's IP, so, um, but just fantastic. Let me know down below what you think about Combinera. I think it's definitely a fun game, and uh, I think puzzle fans will like it. I know some, uh, some people that aren't puzzle fans might not like it, and that's cool. There's something for everyone here. Next, we're going to take a look at another Atari Recharge game. It's going to be uh, Asteroids Recharged by Adam Vision Studios and Atari, and Sneaky Box, of course. Now, uh, it was really hard to choose which Recharge games I wanted since I like them all. I really do. Um, this is one that I find myself playing all the time. This and another one I talk about, maybe. Um, I play it all the time. It's a great pickup and play game. Not only that, but Asteroids has a long legacy with Atari, right? And um, goes back till you know to 1980, right? Um, but it's just such a fantastic take on it. The pulse pounding music from Megan McDuffie, the um, exciting um, power ups you get. It's a lot of fun. Um, definitely a lot of fun. It does get hard after uh, after a few minutes, of course. Um, things start getting a little. Uh, pear-shaped as they say in England um, but it's a uh, it's definitely a fun one let me know below uh, what you think about asteroids recharged and which recharge games are your favorite there are so many on the BCS I want to say gosh at least 10 it seems like um, a lot and hopefully more to come really cool game so the next game I want to go to is Yars recharged so when this game came out, some fans of Yars um, Return and whatnot were a little miffed just because this, such, this is such a different game. It's kind of like a shooter, basically. Um, a couple of friends also said it was too easy. A couple of other friends said it was too hard. So, I, you know, I, I've heard all kinds of feedback about this game. My own personal feedback, and, and I, I appreciate it and respect it. My personal feedback is it's a fantastic game. Um, it's a lot of fun. This definitely is a great shooter um, for fans of that genre. Of course, you have the nostalgia factor with Yars. Um, and I really think that Atari should go this route with more of their games, you know. Yes, it's a completely different game in a way, but it also makes it more fun. I don't think you want to put the same exact game out when you do a recharge game. You need to recharge it a little bit. And this is definitely recharged a lot. And I really enjoy it. Um, this is one of those fun games too with fun leaderboards. I see a lot of hardcore BCS fans on there all the time competing. Um, it's a lot of fun. And I really feel if you have a BCS, you definitely should get Yars recharged. Now this also might be on other systems as well. Um, I'm not sure what, um, which games were put out by limited run. Perhaps all of them, I don't know. But for right now it's digital on the BCS and I'm fine with that. Um, less stuff to tote around. But it's definitely a fun game. Great graphics, great sound. I love the gameplay. Um, I love how sneaky some of these foes can be. Um, I love the Zorlon cannon. It looks like a uh, like a palace over there, a gold palace. It's just it's so pretty. 
Um, really fun game that I think every VCS fan should own and definitely play. So the next game um, after this definitely um, is going to have to probably be hmm, Tempest 4000. I first played this game on the Xbox actually because I saw it for sale at a half price books in Texas um, a year or two ago around Christmas time for like ten dollars it was on clearance I took it home and I freaking loved it I also got one for my nephew uh, and he is a 10 years old and he had never played this before and he loved it and when I told him it was Atari he freaked out so um, this is actually um, this was put out on the Xbox um, from my understanding and other systems but this is a update to Tempest 2000 of course on the Jaguar and uh, just a really really fantastic game probably one of my favorite Atari VCS games uh, so w with that said of course these are in no order obviously this would probably be my top game it's just so fun it's got that 80s arcade vibe it's got that llama soft thing going on uh, it's got um, just all kinds of goodness uh, from the pulse pounding music to the great graphics to the awesome gameplay um, I just love Tempest 4000 uh, it is definitely so fun um, Jeff Minter um, made this game and uh, he's responsible for, gosh, over 40 plus years of gaming, maybe even 50. I did a special on him, of course, on Atari Newsline. Go check it out um, for Jeff Mentor. I'll put the link below. Um, he's a fantastic dev. Um, he's been there since the very beginning, you know, and um, he's put out games for Atari, not only Atari, but the PS Vita, for the Switch, for the Xbox for uh, Nintendo handhelds. Just every game platform you could think of, he's probably had a game on it. Um, and there are so many of his games I still want to play, by the way. Um, I've actually uncovered some of his games um, in emulation, actually, as well. So um, he's got a lot of games out there. Check out that special I did to see exactly what games he had. There were so many good ones that I still haven't even tried, so can't wait. But this game is definitely one of my favorites. I'm going to stop talking here and let you just listen to some of this gameplay for a minute. It's one of my favorites. Check it out.
Awesome, guys. The next game is going to probably have to be, hmm, a game that kind of got really popular recently because it got on the BCS as a Flashback Friday game that they used to put out. So this is Ninja Golf for the Atari 7800. Now, I know many people have never played this game. It was put out in 1990, right, toward the kind of end of, um, of those games. But um, just really, really fun. I really enjoyed Ninja Golf. It combines ninja fighting, it combines golf, and it's got some really outlandish and fun foes um, as well that you fight. Basically, in between fighting rounds, you'll go and put um, your ball, and then here comes some guys again. It really mishmashes a lot together, and I really enjoy it. This kind of reminds me also a little bit of the a game recently I got on my iArcade, um, and I think it was called something like was put out by Irem and something about baseballs and Batman. Of course, Ninja Baseball Batman from 93 by Irem. <clears throat> it's a fantastic game. And this really reminds me of that game in, in, in some ways and that it combines ninja stuff and other stuff. Uh, golf, in this case. It's so much fun. Here, I'm gonna uh, stop talking and let you listen to some of this gameplay. It's a cool one.
Awesome guys. The next one I want to talk about is another recharge game. It's going to have to be Missile Command Recharge. This game is just great. Now this is the update to the um, 2020 version I believe. This is one of the first recharge games but this one here is actually a recharge of the recharge game. I talked to Megan McDuffie about this a little bit um, around last Christmas. I think Christmas Eve on my special where um, I spoke with her on that Atari show. And we discussed this game. I think it had just recently come out at that point. And she was kind of teasing about Caverns of Mars. Uh, she didn't say that by name, but said there was one more going to drop. I really hope that we do see more recharge games. We haven't had one in a while. I'm not sure if Atari's done with these for now or not. Um, it doesn't sound like they are. Um, but this is such a fantastic game. Uh, this is exactly how you should recharge an Atari game. It's got fantastic music, of course, with, this has all been updated. We have leaderboards, um, we have uh, power-ups. I really enjoy it. The background adds a lot, too. I think in the original there was no backdrop there with the city, as you see. I think, anyway, I could be wrong. I think that was added in. But this is a fantastic recharge game. Of course, I love all of them. I find myself playing this one a lot when I just want to kind of plug in and play really quickly. Um, you know, rounds can last as long as you need them to. You don't feel tied down to anything. Um, it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of personal memories with Missile Command, with me and my older sister on our Atari 2600 back in the day, playing and fighting over that controller. Um, just so much fun. I really, really enjoy Missile Command. And this recharge game, I feel like every VCS owner should definitely own and play. It's a lot of fun. What do you think? So the next game you guys I want to focus on is going to have to be Tower of Rubble. Now this came out recently on the Atari VCS along with Amoeba Jump. These are two games that are just so fun. Um, I really enjoy them. Um, I reached out to the dev to see if they want to come on that Atari show by the way. Um, sometimes that's not successful because they're busy and don't respond or they have stuff going on but let's hope they do. I just love Tower of Rubble. Now, these games are pretty cheap, too. I think they're under $4 on the VCS. Um, these games are definitely made for the Atari 2600, so the graphics speak of that. But this game is just so awesome. I love the how, how simple it is and addictive. It's a lot of fun. Definitely check it out. So the next game, this could obviously be my number one as well, is BPM Boy. I've gone on and on about this game before. It's fantastic. Now this is by Retro Ninja, aka Tony Barnes, who did the Desert Strike series back in the day, and he has a varied history with Atari as well, going back like 20, 30 years. Um, great dev. And this game, you can tell he put a lot of love into this game. I can see that this game may have taken him a while, because it's so high quality. It's full of great characters, it's got great music, 
um, great gameplay. Um, I play this all the time as well. I did read somewhere that Tony Barnes made this game because his mother loved Marble Madness back in the day on the NES, I believe. And um, this is even better to me. This is so fun. Um, I don't show you here, but there are also hidden Atari symbols, like Fuji symbols you can collect um, as well to get bonuses. Such a fun game. Let's take a look at it. Okay, moving on here. So this game I want to feature right now is another recharge game. Uh, it's Gravatar Recharge. Now this is a great example of a recharge game because I love playing this more than the original. The original Gravatar on arcade is really hard to me. Um, just really, really tough. This game I can actually sink my teeth into. Now this game has a level of difficulty as well. But it's, it's so much more pretty. I mean, look at it. So in this level here, you're destroying enemies. Um, there are other planets you travel to where you're lighting up beacons, which you move closer to, um, to light them up and avoid enemies as well. Those blue things are also power-ups you can grab if you're ever so brave to go in that cave, which I'm not. So when your ship hits anything, it kind of sounds like glass breaking, and uh, that happens to me a lot in this game, just because it's, you know, it's Gravatar still, so it's a little hard, but I really enjoy it. Um, it's so beautiful. I mean, look at this. It really just shines on the Atari VCS. And I would love to see more games recharged in such a way. Look at this. It's just beautiful. And this one here, you're lighting up beacons, as I said. Um, and there are three. And you have to get pretty much just close to them and um, to light that up. But such a fun game. Let me know what you think. So moving on. This game is Berserk for the Atari 2600. This was put out recently whenever Atari acquired uh, those uh, games, um, Berserk and Frenzy, as well as some others. They did a lot of acquisitions in the past year, um, and this is one of them. So they put this back out in the VCS just to kind of show that they own the game, which is nice. I wish they would do this more often with every game they purchase. That would be cool. Berserk is so fun to me. Um, it was one of the first voice-activated home console games on the 5200, I believe. Um, I own that copy, too. And um, where Evil Auto will come by and say, chicken fight like a robot, stuff like that. Intruder alert, whatnot. Evil Auto was actually based on a real office manager for the programmer at a different job he had. And I love that story. It really just makes sense. Apparently, he would crank the music up. Um, keep people out of the building during times and then he was always timing everyone on their breaks and um, he, he could be rude and selfish and it's really fun. I love that as a backstory. The next game I want to show you is Aquaventure. Now this was released on the VCS to kind of celebrate Aquaventure being out um, on Atari XP in cart format and I did a a uh, three-part series about that with Aquaventure being one of those. Go check it out. I'll put it below. Um, this is such a fun game. I really love Aquaventure. This game was never officially released for the 2600 back in the day. I don't know why. It is so good. The graphics just shine. The gameplay is kind of instantaneous and satisfying. It's so much fun. Um, I really, really enjoy it. Let me know down below what you think about Aquaventure. It's one of my top 2600 games for sure. So fun. 
So moving on here, going down to the depths of my catalog, we're going to look at Alien Abduction. This is another game that came out recently, which was made for the Atari 2600, pretty much a homebrew game for the 2600, uh, done by the creator of Hero, which is one of Activision's big games for the 2600 back in the day. This has a lot in common with Hero, of course. You are kind of hovering with the jet boots there still. Um, this is such a fun game. Um, I love the uh, graphics in this. I love how it's like a throwback to 2600. There have been a few of these recently, and I really hope Atari does more of this kind of thing. I love it. It kind of adds value to the system to me. Let me know what you think. Okay guys, the next game is Frog Hop. Now this game uh, was put out by Tiny Warrior Games. I interviewed the dev recently on that Atari show. Um, it's a fun little platformer. Now it also could have featured um, Ato or Ato, which is their other game. Um, a lot of fun as well and really beautiful. I love this game because it's a simple platformer and I feel like we need more of these on the VCS for sure. Um, it's a really cute game, I enjoy it. I find myself playing this one also from time to time just to see how far I can get, you know, mindlessly being on the phone or whatever. Um, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy Frog Hop. Let me know what you think down below. Oops. Okay, another homebrew game here. We're going to look at Amoeba Jump. Now, this game came out along with Tower of Rubble, and um, it is such a fun game. Um, I enjoy it as well. I probably like um, Tower of Rubble a little bit better or a little more, but I know a lot of people that like this more than Tower of Rubble too. So this is really cool. This kind of reminds me of Quick Step. Uh, which I think was in a magic game I've talked about in the channel before. It reminds me of that a little bit, because you are hopping from platform to platform. It also reminds me of q in some weird way. I don't know why. But um, such a fun game. I enjoy it. It is pretty merciless, though. If, if you miss a platform, you're dead, right? And you have these little bumpers here that bump you up higher, and you also collect letters to get a bonus. Now, I've never actually gotten a bonus, because I've gotten that far, but <laughs> it's fun. I really enjoy it. Let me know what you think. Okay, guys, these next two games are the Atari Vaults. Now, um, my system came with Atari Vault 1 and 2 because I, I got a uh, release edition of the VCS. I'm not sure if it still is. I think it is still coming with the system. But these two games are amazing. Um, this is put out by Code Mystics as well and Atari. Um, you have a great mix of arcade games here. You have a mix of 5200 and 2600 games as well. Um, I wish there were seven, 800 games in the vaults too. Um, maybe it'll come out in three, I don't know. But um, I really, really enjoy the vaults. I'm doing a special right now on No Filter HD about Vault 1 and Vault 2, the VCS vault, I should say. So this is based on Atari Vault, which was a uh, game put out uh, for PCs and other systems, just called Atari Vault. So this is kind of made just for the VCS, but I really enjoy the menus here. I enjoy the nice selection of games. There's galleries for each game as well. Um, so um, just really fun. Um, there's a good mix of 70s, 80s games, um, unreleased arcade games as well. Um, you have lots of variety here that celebrates Atari's history, and I really think that's important. I think it's important to have titles like this on your VCS. Um, whether or not you live through the period like some of us did, um, you can still appreciate where Atari came from. So I'm going to go to that other one now. I think this is Vault 1. Did I matter of order? Uh, both great compilations. So I'm going to be quiet here and let you listen. Let me know down below what you think about the vaults. And check out my No Filter HD series about it. It's cool.
All right, guys, moving on here, we are taking a look at Desert Falcon for the 7800. Now, Atari used to put out these Flashback Friday titles every Friday in the very beginning, I believe, and um, they were cool. They were like two or three ninety nine games you could get like under three bucks, four bucks. Um, and these are like the actual um, ROMs of the games, right? So this is one of those games for the Atari 7800 I really enjoy. I enjoy it on my APIC computer as well. I love Desert Falcon. Um, it's an isometric shooter, of course. You're collecting hieroglyphs to basically get to the end of, of the level here and fight the Sphinx. Now, I've never gotten too far past the Sphinx. I've gotten to a level past it before and died, but so I don't know if the enemies change or if it's the same thing. But this is just a fun game. Um, I really enjoyed the graphics, too, for the time. They were pretty cool. Really, really, really fun game. I love it. The next game I want to move along to is another one put out by the immortal John Hancock. Um, it is Catacombs of Chaos. And this was also made for the Atari 2600. Um, I may have said this before. I actually spoke to, to the dev of of this game as well as the other, the Game Quest game. And uh, just really, really cool games. I think another great example of homebrews on the 2600. I'm glad John brought these to the system. In this game, you're actually putting carts in the consoles they belong to of the same color, and you're supposed to be John Hancock right here. Really fun. The next game I want to tell you about is uh, another Jeff Mentor game. It's none other than Aka R. Now, this is a reimagining of Aka R. Um, Aka R was a arcade game that was never officially released, from my understanding, back in the day. Um, I do have it on my Tempest RK 1-Up Atari Legacy cabinet, however, the original game. I also have it on my Centipede uh, cabinet as well, from RK 1-Up. Um, but this is a fun game. Now, it can be a little complicated. Um, I think it's beautiful, though. Um, and, and once you get the game mechanic down, you can really have a good time. It's kind of more of a puzzler, really, and a shooter. But definitely check out Aka R. It's definitely a piece of Atari history. And Jeff Mentor, you can't go wrong, right? Okay, we have another recharge game here to look at. I want to take a look at Breakout Recharged. This is one of the original games as well that were recharged for the system. And uh, just a fun game. I find myself playing this one a lot as well. Just because it's so simple, um, it does add many more power-ups to this than the original had. But it's essentially the same game, right? Um, the the power-ups add a lot of replayability to it for me. Um, the great soundtrack from Megan McDuffie, of course, and the great um, graphics by Adam Vision and Sneaky Box. Just a really fun game. I enjoy it. I like all of the recharge games, and this one really shines too. Okay, so this is one game, guys, I don't have. This is called Super Smash. My good friend Bacon Ice Cream Productions went on and on about this game recently to me, and it's one that I definitely want to pick up. Um, apparently, it mismashes like JPRG games and 
other games as well together. And uh, a lot of fun. Here's a little bit of the trailer when it was on the PS4, I believe. Take a look. Last but not least, guys, another game you should have on the BCS is none other than Atari 50 by Digital Eclipse. This was put out the to celebrate Atari's 50th anniversary recently, the world. Um, late last year, and it quickly became my favorite game of the year, as well as many others. It's a fantastic um, homage to Atari uh, from Mike Micah and Digital Eclipse. Um, of course, I talked to Stephen Frost on that Atari show late last year, before this game came out. And um, had a great really experience talking with him. Uh, this is a fantastic up. game. The there was um, only if you're not Atari, even in, like a huge Atari it fan per se, it's a fantastic I would compilation. Spend the it's probably the best years. compilation I've ever seen. But every I've future compilation the should definitely go by as well. Everybody that's come since then awesome game. Let me know if you have it. And let me know what you think about my list of my top 30 games. Like I said, I couldn't put everything in here. There are many I wanted to put in here, including Thrustlander and so many others. But I wanted to give everyone a nice variety of what's out there for the BCS. Let me know down below what you think about that. I would love to hear it. You can also email me at thatatarishow at alec.com or atarinewsline at alec.com with any of your suggestions or opinions. And you can also just comment down below. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you like the channel as well. I would love to hear from you. And I would love to talk with you and chat too when these air live. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, it's game over time, unfortunately. I just wanted to thank you all for subscribing and for watching that Atari show and my channel. I appreciate it. I'm getting really close to 1,000 subscribers. And I just wanted to say, um, I really owe it all to PK in the Universe, a friend of mine on YouTube. He told me to, to kind of refocus and focus on what I'm passionate about, and that's Atari. And I'm glad I did. It's brought me a lot of joy, and I freaking love it. And you guys are amazing. Um, also, um, the YouTuber of the month contest is still in full swing on the Real Bit Wars page. This is probably my last notice to everyone about it. Please go vote for BCB on that video. I'll put it down below for the June 2023 nomination video. I appreciate it so much. Let me know what you think about this episode. Couldn't fit everything in, but I tried to fit a lot of the ones in that I enjoy and try to give you a variety too. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Next time, we're going to be talking to my great friend, Luke's Awakening. And I'm so excited. He actually recently went through every single Atari Jaguar commercial game and CD game. And he's here to give us final thoughts and his impressions about the Atari Jaguar. We'll see you next time, guys. Be a good person, get your Java, and go play some Atari. We'll see you later. Bye now.
You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy.